everyone, welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today I have a haul for y'all. Um, ew, I always accidentally rhyme those. I never mean to, and then they come out of my mouth. So I've been traveling a bunch, and I have been to Portland and Seattle. No, sorry, I live in Seattle. Palm Springs, which are two, to me, top-tier vintage destinations. Actually, I'd argue the best, better vintage than Palm Springs is Joshua Tree, but that's neither here nor there. So I want to show you all the goodies I picked up this haul. Oh, it's not Seattle I was thinking of. It was Tacoma. I also went to Glenna's, which is the spin vintage warehouse. I'll link my video as well as Christina's down below showing you how big and awesome this warehouse is. So I've picked up a lot of vintage needless to say in the past few months. Today I'm going to show you all my spring outfits. I will show you like more trousers and sweaters and stuff in the fall but I want to show stuff kind of vaguely timely with what's happening in the weather. I guess we're well into summer by the time you probably see this video but I like to pretend that spring lasts forever because it's my favorite season. In these videos I go from jewelry to accessories and then to clothing and in clothing I go least exciting to most exciting to show you guys what I've picked up like I said we start with jewelry which I am sitting on all of this jewelry yep all of it's from Glenna's she does have a jewelry specific Etsy which I'll link down below she is such a wonderful woman definitely purchase from her you're definitely purchasing from a small business that is run with a lot of love and care so first up I guess I'll start with brooches I got four brooches while I was there I got this really really gorgeous black cameo brooch I went digging through her not listed jewelry because I suspected there would be some good things and boy did I find them I really love this black kind of cameo sculptural brooch. I think it would look really nice like on a scarf or whatever. I don't know. I'm not good at wearing brooches, but I loved this one. I also liked, I have this cute little walrus brooch. He just kind of cracked me up. My friend found him actually. And I just think he's really cute. Oh, did he lose his eye gem? I'll have to go dig for that. I had him set down and I think I tripped over him. So I'll have to look for his little eye gem, but he's super cute and very funny. And I, I don't know, I saw him and I had to have him. And then I also have two really beautiful bee brooches. One has gems and one has pearls. She had a whole drawer of bug brooches and I told her she should list them ASAP because bug brooches always go pretty quickly. And I'm very excited about these two brooches. I think they're really, really cute. I guess you could maybe say the pearl one's a fly, but I like to say they're both bees, even though I kind of like flies too. Next up I have, it's this kind of chain style bolo tie. I like to wear these with collared shirts. I think they make a really cute accessory for that. And I love how feminine this one is. Most of my bolo ties are a little bit more masculine. So I like how delicate this one is. I have this really cute Trafari necklace set here. It is a bunch of branches and it's clear stones. I just thought this was really stunning and very much in my aesthetic. Spooky's gonna come say hello. So I picked it up. I thought it was so cute. Oh, it has a little cute dangly key on it. It's adorable. And that's it for jewelry. I don't wear enough jewelry to get much jewelry and I honestly shouldn't have gotten any of those pieces with how little I wear my jewelry. So next we're going to go into accessories. First up, I just have two kind of boring brown belts that I picked up in Portland. Portland is a great city for vintage shopping. I will try to find the name of the shop I got these at. I think it might've been Hollywood Vintage which is funny because it's in Portland. So let me double check that and I will like link anything about them down below. I just had been looking for some brown belts. I don't know if like replacements is the right word. I have some brown belts that are very, very decorative and I just wanted some kind of plainer ones. So I picked these up. And then at Glenna's again, I got a couple handbags. I got this, oh, sorry, spooky. Really lovely crocodile hat handbag. It needs a little bit of stitching up one of the sides to like make it fully secure again. I think at some point I'll just take it to Cobbler and have them do it. I am admitting I find myself rather short on time for projects like this right now. So I think it's better to take these and do them somewhere else. And then the second bag I got is this beautiful patent letter, patent, well, I don't even think it's probably real leather, but patent leather piece. It's really beautiful. I picked up both of these just because they're so big and they can fit my phone and my keys and my wallet, masks, lipstick, everything I need to leave the house. So I picked these up for that. I really love this one. I remembered seeing this one on my first trip to her warehouse, but I was already so over budget back then that there was no way I could justify a bag. And now I am further into my career. I know what I use and need and so I picked this one up okay spooky sorry I'm gonna have to move you boop okay next up we're gonna go into some hats I have gotten quite a few hats I again am not the sorry spooky 
she just yelled at me because I dropped all my hats on her after I kicked her out of the chair. This is the first one. It's this really pretty blue hat. I just think this is a really nice shape. I think it looks really good on me. I don't know. I like it. It's cute. It makes me feel pretty. And this is from Glenna's. Three of these hats are for Glenna, from Glenna's. This next one is this lovely kind of like greenish hat with this big like floral thing on it, as well as some twigs and things. And I just think, again, it's really lovely. And I do find myself actually using these types of hats in the summer to keep the sun out of my eyes and off of my face. So these are great for me. And I think they're, this one's really, really cute. Next up is also from Glenna's. <laughs> this is a beautiful 1940s hat. It has these little woven berries on them that I just thought were so cute so I picked it up and I also this is like a more mild brimmed hat I think again this looks really good on me so I picked it up Glenna Glenna slung some killer deals while I was there this last round I did bring I don't think 20 friends but I brought a bunch of friends through to just I don't know help her not have to list things on Etsy so if you ever are into Tacoma definitely make a an appointment with her it is so much fun there's some great things and I don't know it's just a lot of fun last hat I picked up in Palm Springs. This actually is not vintage. I'm cheating, but it is a high quality hat that I believe one day will probably become future vintage. Um, and I wore this a ton in Palm Springs. I like it because it has the string for if it's windy. It's a very practical hat and it's super high quality. And I just like the way this one looks as well. So I wore that a ton in Palm Springs. Let's see if we can now recover my hair. I'll see if I can find the brand or where I bought the hat from in case you're looking. I, yeah, I thought they had a great variety of hats and they were really high quality and pretty good price for how high quality they were. I think that one was about 65, which for a high quality straw hat is not too bad. Next up, we're talking about clothes. Hold up, let me find my last one. Ha, I got it, okay. Next up are clothes. Uh, I'm first talking about the slips that I picked up just because I have picked up a bunch of slips. I, at Glenna's, was looking for specific colors. I wanted some pink and blue slips to wear under transparent things. I don't really like to wear neutrals under that because I like to be very deliberate in the fact that my slip is showing. I don't like it to be like, I don't know, a question mark. So I got this nice corally pink one, super high quality feeling fabric. I've worn this one a bunch already. This blue one, which if you watched my recent video making a uh, vintage like 1930s silk dress that was backless, this is what I wore under it to make it work appropriate because it then brought up the neckline and made the back not so open and exposed. So I have used this one a bunch and I also just think this one is incredibly pretty. It even has like this nice blue scalloped hem with the netting and it's absolutely stunning. And all three of these are from Glenna's. I can't remember if I said that. And then this last pink one, I was only going to get one pink one, but I felt like they were different enough pinks with this being a cooler toned baby pink and the other being coral. But I also just liked how frilly this one is. Honestly, all these slips I could wear on their own if I want to. I just am not a huge like slip is outerwear wearer, but I do wear slips a ton. I wear them under almost everything. And then the last slip I picked up, I think I picked up at Lucky Vintage in Denver. And it is just this nice black 40s slip. It has, hopefully you can see this, this scalloped edge. And it's just like, larger, comfier, and I thought it was super cute, and since it is 1940s, it's rayon, which is always a plus. Next up, we're going into the rest of the clothes I picked up. I am only showing dresses for the most part this round, just because I didn't feel like filming separate. I will show each of these in a try-on. One I forgot to take a video and I only took photos of, so you'll see the photos, but everything else I remembered to film. First up, not that I regret buying this, I just think if I had had more time to think about it, I might not have picked it up. It is really, really pretty. However, this is definitely not vintage. It's just, you can tell the way the rickrack is. I don't know how to explain it, but like the fact the rickrack's printed on the fabric, like these big bands of rickrack are printed on the fabric and there's really, really cheap rickrack around it. It's definitely a modern piece, but I thought it was really fun and pretty and I will wear it a bunch this summer and I guess see how I feel about it by the end of summer. Yeah, it's not that I regret buying it. I just definitely don't think it was like the wisest use of my money ever, but I will try to give it a good bunch of wear. The synthetic fabric admittedly does borrow, bother me. On vacation, I am not always as like keyed in on only buying things that are useful for me. However, at the same shop, I also picked up this dress, which I've already done a bit of restore, restoration, restoration restoration on. This is a really beautiful cotton 90s dress. It has pockets. It fits me really comfortably. I picked up this dress mostly just to wear for 
like summer sewing days. So I'm sure you'll see me wear this a ton. Super comfy, super breathable, super light. It's a great piece. Really, really happy with this one because I have outgrown a couple of my other like cotton day dresses. So it was nice to add this one in for those heavy sewing days that I just need something comfy in. Next up, I'm pretty excited about this. Wow, I really should have buttoned it up though. So what this is, is this is actually a reproduction 1910s dress. And it's actually pretty well detailed and feels pretty true to original 1910s dresses. This is from Glenna's. I also had to do a little bit of re restoration on this. Uh, it had some spots on it, but I decided to buy it because it's re reproduction. I actually feel comfortable wearing it to work, wearing it out, as opposed to some of the genuine 1910s dresses that I have that I really only feel comfortable wearing for pictures. Because it is reproduction, it is by Westminster Lace. Still like vintage, it's probably like 1980s, but it's not 1910s. And so it's just, it's a little less precious and I can wear it more out and about. Next up also from Glenna's is this really beautiful, probably 60s kind of Dirndl style dress. This is by Mr. Bob of California. It has this beautiful ribbon around the waist, really, really, really wide circle skirt, fully lined, just a great, piece that I was really excited to pick up from Glenna. Glenna said when I bought it that it looks like a dress I already had, which guilty as charged. I do have two dresses very similar to this, but I wear them a ton so I can have another one, right? That's how I justify it anyway. Next up, I'm very excited about this one. I need to give it a restoration bath. This is an Emma Dom, actually. Uh, it's maybe 1940s, maybe 1950s evening dress. It's floor length. It's really, really, really beautiful. Honestly, most of the seams need restitching. It needs a really good bath, but it is a gorgeous piece. It has this bow detail on the butt. If this one makes me feel really, really pretty. So I just need to kind of get my bravery up, give this a nice bath, redo a bunch of the seams and truly do a hopefully good job restoring it to live with me. One of the things that I do like about going to Glenna's warehouse is a lot of the stuff in the racks that are not on her Etsy have some damage. So a lot of times when I'm buying them, I am doing some restoration work myself, which I really, really enjoy and find very, very rewarding. Next up, I need to grab my computer to read you some information about this type of dress. Please hold. I did not tee up the article because I am a goof. All right, next up is a San Antonino Oaxaca dress. So I identified this in a Portland vintage shop. It was labeled as a 1970s peasant dress. I think it's really, really important for those of us who wear vintage, buy vintage and deal vintage to know how to identify indigenous embroideries when we can. This is not a piece from the 1970s. I mean, it could be from the 1970s, but this is from that specific region in Mexico. It is an indigenous craft and it's really, really important that we acknowledge them. From all my research, it seems like it's fine for me to wear something like this as long as I understand like cultural significance and background on it. And I learned a lot of really, really cool things while researching this piece. I saw it in the store and I honestly couldn't bear some yuppie who doesn't know how to identify indigenous textiles wearing it around like it was something from the 70s. I could tell this was made like all the embroidery was made by one woman. And I, I just, I knew it was indigenous embroidery work and I I couldn't leave it there. It also does fit me, um, but I didn't even know if it would fit me when I bought it. With my research, yeah, I found it was a San Antonino dress from the Oaxaca region. So basically the way these dresses are made is one woman works on a dress for anywhere from days to weeks to months, and then it is all finished. I really feel very lucky because I have this, which I'll take a close up photo of. It's this band that has little tiny people holding hands in it, which is a specific technique that not all of them have. Mm, let me quick read this little blurb I found about it. Below in the chest and sometimes the waist area of a blouse, one can be lucky and find the hazme sueti puedes technique, which literally translates to make me if you can, and as its name suggests, is distinctive for difficulty in replicating and typical of the region. This technique shows tiny men and women lying together and holding hands that represents the family's union in a strong united community that works together to achieve the same goal and maintain their customs and traditions. This particular embroidery technique takes years to learn and is distinctive to very few artisans in the town. I 
will say seeing this technique is what made me identify it initially as being indigenous work I knew this was a highly skill embroidery technique I mean it's clear that all of this is incredibly high skill embroidery so yeah I did pick it up if you're interested in one of these make sure you are buying them from a artisan of the town I normally would have bought it from them instead of taking it out of a vintage store but I just I knew that the person who would buy this probably would not understand the history of it and really really have a true appreciation oh excuse you Ooh. whoops for this dress and would not show it the proper appreciation it deserves so I did I picked it up I've worn it a couple times and I just definitely think about the person who made this a lot because it's a really really beautiful piece of craftsmanship and you can tell whoever made this is a true master of embroidery it is so stunning that is my second to last dress. The last dress I got I was very excited about. I don't see too many of these. It is a black gunny sacks. So I own a fully black acetate gunny sacks. And it's great, it's cute, but I do really prefer the cotton. It's much more breathier. And this one is so, so cute. I have worn this one a ton since I got it. It fits me really, really well. I love the little velvet detail here. I like kind of the way this zigzags around the shoulders. I just think it's a really, really, really stunning piece. This is probably one of the most expensive Dugani sacks I've bought, which I was only willing to do because it was such a unique piece. I bought this from Lucky Vintage here in Seattle. They have a fantastic website and they do drops I think once a week and they really truly source some really amazing pieces and yeah I I had been looking kind of for a gunny sacks like this I knew it was gonna cost a lot and it did but I'm more than happy I've definitely already gotten a ton of use out of it and I'm really excited about it for next winter and fall because there's also enough room in the arms and the bust and stuff for me to layer so I am nice and warm in the winter but that concludes my vintage haul today I hope you enjoyed it I hope you've learned something new as always, you can support me by giving this video a thumbs up and commenting down below maybe what your favorite piece is. Of course, subscribe and stick around. Every other week I do a sewing video and then the other alternating weeks I do a whatever my brain decides to produce video. So that is what's going on here, I guess. So stick around. I upload every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific time and I would love to see you every week. I will see you next time. Bye.